going to be talking about the novel in relation to emotion uh, and generally the novel uh, in relation to feelings. And I think that what we've done over the last two or three hundred years is devised an artistic form that has become very refined in, in enabling us to inhabit the minds of others. Um, I'm going to talk about a particular mode within fiction called free and direct style. Uh, it's a term that's much used by, by writers, but it's often uh, not fully understood. We all know it. You know it as soon as you, as you have it explained to you. It's that way of writing in which you're writing in the third person, but you colour the world with the emotional tone of, of a central character. Uh, you'll see it in children's books, uh, as well as adult novels. Uh, it's quite a complex rhetorical position for the reader to take, to know what is the narrator's and what is the character's. And the reason I think we are able to do this is because we do have what's called rather clumsily in cognitive psychology, a, a theory of mind. And I suppose my suggestion will be that theory of mind is, uh, or rather the novel is, uh, a refinement of that ability we have to sense other people's minds. And not only do that, but recursively to get a sense of how we are playing in their minds. Fiction has, in other words, become uh, an adaptation, an artistic adaptation of something we do all and the thing that free and direct style does is solve a problem which I think neuroscience will never be able to solve. Um, neuroscience will never get past the fact that they have to supply third person accounts of first person phenomena. Free and direct style gives you both at once, the first and the third, and also the world coloured through the emotions of the subject. So what I'm going to suggest is that one reason perhaps that the novel has not died, despite all the amazing and powerful and eloquent other forms that have grown up around it, is that it gives us that everyday sense and that everyday insight and analysis as well as immediacy of other people's thinking.